full turnkey solutions beyond just individual sensors. So for instance, in India, we put the APY-10 radar on the P-8 aircraft. That's our maritime and overland surveillance radar system. Um, we also have a um, maritime radar called Seaview that we sell internationally. Um, and we have a whole array of electro-optic and infrared systems. We can also integrate all those um, to give a full customer emission solution. So I'm going is, it, is it for um, MH-60 helicopter? So this particular one is on an MH-60. It's on the uh, MH-60R, the Romeo, and the Sierra. The same. And this turret is the same one that goes on the Predator A. So we also have, besides the manned platforms, we have sensor solutions that go on Predator A, Predator B, and the Global Hawk. Um, so what I'm, and we also have a complement of ground stations. So we have the ability to be able to control these UAVs, take information down, disseminate it out to ground forces. So I'm going to show you an example of a mission. We'll take a littoral mission. Um, where you'd have a tendency to have some high-level, high-altitude persistent surveillance asset. In this scenario, we have a Global Hawk. Um, so a Global Hawk is going to be doing a wide area surveillance over a sea lane, looking for um, ships that aren't in places they're supposed to be in, right? There's uh, something coming toward a piece of critical in infrastructure that you're trying to protect. So the Global Hawk has a maritime MTI um, capability that allows it to track surface vessels, right? make sure things are staying in their sea lanes. That information is transferred down to ground stations and can be out to a central tactical operations center um, who can control the entire um, scenario. So in, in this thing, these guys don't get that too Sorry. close. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> in, in this situation, these guys see two targets that they're interested in that they need to take a closer look at. So the so the Global Hawk's at 65,000 feet. They need to take something, um, another asset, and vector it in closer to be able to get a closer look. Uh, in this in this case, the Beach 350 ER has a sea view radar and an EOIR sensor. So it has the ability to do, pick up those targets, doing maritime surveillance, track other targets, and to do imagery to be able to classify these targets. So this is a typical shape of a, um, a vessel that's a military vessel. It has superstructures in the middle. But, but these guys... Is it a hostile vessel? No. This, this one, they would say no, but these ones, maybe. And they're also, they're also showing up in a place they're not supposed to be. Um, so what happens is they get the Beach 350 then gets tasked to, to go over and take a picture out that and with the EOIR camera, right? So they can request the tactical imagery down at the ground station. Come on. And so the Beach 350 can not only take the picture and send that back, but can also send back full motion video if, if that's what's required. And then they use that information in the ground station to be able to task ships or other assets to go out there and actually intercept um, that ship if it's, if it's in an area it's not supposed to be in. Um, but also they can monitor um, and actually uh, uh, take a video of the interception so it's documented for law enforcement reasons. Um, and. And th this allows us to do everything from the wide area surveillance all the way down to the interception and have this uh, information missionized and um, recorded uh, specifically to be able to um, um, prosecute from these kind of things. People in areas that are, are in fisheries are not supposed to be in, people who are um, outside fishing lanes. and. Um, we provide these solutions, kind of an end-to-end -end solution, as well as individual sensors if that's just what um, is needed by the customer. So that's an example of um, a maritime um, situation, and we can do any part of that. We can do a full missionized aircraft or just put a, a radar or electro-optic sensor in one of your aircraft or UAV. Um, so really Raytheon can do the whole range of solutions. Is it uh, applicable very much in the context of homeland security? 
Yes. Matter of fact, the um, um, this Beach 350 air aircraft uh, we're marketing as an integrated EO. IR and radar platform specifically for uh, homeland security, um, fisheries protection, exclusive economic zone, uh, monitoring, oil spill detection, um, piracy, anti-piracy, those types of missions. That, that's really what this platform is made to do. Who all are the operators around the world as of now? So it depends on the on the um, exact systems we're talking about. The Sea View radar that goes on the Beach 350 aircraft, um, we've sold about 150 of those around the world that are currently operating right now in about 10 different countries. So um, this is definitely an exportable product. It was designed to be exportable. Um, so there's no issues with that or with this integrated platform. So the licenses and everything are in places in case you have to propose these kind of solutions That's also right. to India? Yes, yes, absolutely. Have you proposed any similar solution so far to India and to which level? Um, I, I don't think this solution has been proposed yet to India. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what kind of deployment U.S. is doing as, as of, is, is having as of now for the uh, with these solutions, um, right? Well, this, like for instance, this spe specific system, the Sea View Maritime Radar, is an operation on the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Dash Eight aircraft, okay. on their P3 aircraft, and some U.S. Navy aircraft as okay. well, supporting homeland security type missions. Since how long? Um, it's been uh, six years. Uh, they've been flying these systems and other. System maritime radars that we have have been in the Navy inventory for over 40 years. Like you said, uh, it's, these are exportable. So when do you foresee India is likely to be proposed with these solutions? Well, the APY-10 radar has already been contracted for through Boeing for the P-8. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Right. So so that system's already uh, you know in in, in process coming, coming, yeah. in process. Yeah. Um, I don't. I'm not sure what the next um, uh, requirement is for India. I know they have a tiered strategy, so P8's way at the top, um, and I don't know what the the next uh, uh, request for proposal or request for bid okay. will be out for India. But something like this, the Beach 350 integrated uh, uh, maritime package, would be applicable for that for coastal surveillance and homeland security. Have you made any pre presentations so far? Not yet in India um, for Indian Navy for Indian Coast Guard yes, yes, and I, I know there for been. marine police also being worked upon now in India see our, our re I know our regional director in that area has done that I don't have a, a list of them now if that's one of the questions on your um, on your list of questions we can I can get you a solid answer to that, that but yeah we have a regional manager in that area who has interacted with um, um, not just the Indian Navy but also the Indian Coast Guard and, and the government there Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to yeah, looking at uh, this uh, process, uh, it f appears that uh, a lot of information is flowing. How do you tackle the overload of information? So that's a great question. The, um, especially in the maritime and littoral environment, there can be hundreds and hundreds of targets. Mm -hmm. So the operator has to have a way to not only detect everything moving on the ocean surface, but also to be able to sort the target field. Um, and there's several methods for doing that. Um, one is you can correlate these targets with uh, automatic identification information, AIS data. That's a transponder that ships have um, over of a certain tonnage. So every ship's supposed to have one of those, and we can correlate that data with the radar data, and then turn off those targets and just look at targets that are in places they're not supposed to be and are not transponding the information that, that legally they're supposed to be. So that's one example. The other is I can look in a certain area here and look for all targets moving in a certain direction at a certain speed and just concentrate on those. And then I can take ISAR images to be able to classify those specific targets. I can set up um, 
boundaries and a photographer crosses that boundaries it can alert the operator so there's many different ways to be able to um, allow the operator to make his mission more efficient um, and typically you have a tiered structure like I said a wide area surveillance asset that's at a higher altitude that may that may be a P8 or maybe a um, um, like a global hawk or predator um, that has a persistent surveillance and then you have other assets that can actually go uh, closer to be able to get an eyes on um, kind of capability to be able to ID specific targets of interest. Very exciting and interesting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much.